The world is a big place, with many places still left undiscovered and unexplored. Today, we'll take a look at some of the strangest regions on the planet. Here are the top 15 barely explored places. Number 15. Star Mountains, Papua New Guinea Papua New Guinea is an independent state that is on the eastern side of the island that it shares with Indonesia and is to the north of Australia. It's the third largest island country in the world, covering an area of almost 200,000 square miles, but with a population of just 9 million people, most of whom who live in cities and towns. Vast swaths of the country lay undisturbed. One of the most remote regions are the Star Mountains, a range that's to the west of the country. They're famed for a structure called the Hindenburg Wall, which is a network of limestone plateaus that are more than a mile high and make it virtually impossible to travel through. The first expedition that tried to map the area set off in 1959, but because of the extreme altitudes involved, the helicopters crashed and explorers were forced to continue on foot. These same challenges have prevented many large-scale efforts ever since, and while several expeditions have managed to gather data on the vast wealth of plant and animal life that live there, and aren't found anywhere else on Earth, it's still believed that more than 90% of the region is yet to be charted. When you couple the difficulty of actually reaching the mountains with political unrest in the country, it's meant that the Star Mountains are one of the last unexplored ranges in the world, and researchers can only imagine what they'll find when they finally manage to get there. Fjordland National Park, New Zealand New Zealand is simply a stunning country that's covered in geographical features unlike anywhere else in the world. It's no wonder that it was chosen as the location for the Lord of the Rings movies because of its glaciers, fjords, and mountain ranges. But the topography of the country makes it very difficult to reach some of the regions. The Fjordland National Park is a 5,000 square mile region to the southwest of the Southern Island and was set up in 1904 as a national reserve. It's by far the largest of the country's national parks and is covered in huge glacial structures. There are a number of tourist attractions there such as the Milford Sound Glacier, but these make up just a small fraction of its total area. Huge regions of the national park are simply inaccessible because of the mountainous terrain and even if people were able to reach the more remote parts, the conditions are so inhospitable that they wouldn't be able to stay there for long. It's for this reason that the vast majority of the national park remains unexplored. And there are almost certainly countless plant and animal species that are waiting to be discovered that don't exist anywhere else on Earth. Number 12. Northern Patagonia, Chile Patagonia is the region at the southernmost tip of South America and is part of both Argentina and Chile. It's where the Andes mountain range ends and because of its southerly location is covered in lakes, fjords, glaciers, and deserts. Very few people live there because of the harsh conditions and large areas of land are protected for indigenous people, which means that despite its undeniable beauty, very little exploration has actually been done there. In fact, Patagonia has only been accessible by road since the 1980s with the construction of a highway and it's in an area of significant interest to climate scientists because it's home to the Northern Patagonian ice field, which is one of the largest masses of ice outside of the polar regions. In many ways, this is one of the last remaining areas of wilderness to still be charted in the world. But the risk is that by encouraging exploration, the perfectly preserved environment may become tarnished. This means that in order to protect the region, very few permits are issued each year to allow visitors in the hope that this policy will help maintain the region for years to come. Number 11. Cape Melville, Australia On the eastern coast of the Cape York Peninsula in Australia is a region that's often described as a lost world. Known as Cape Melville, it's only 900 miles away from Brisbane, which is one of the largest cities in the country. But the area's unique geography has meant that it's not exactly conducive to exploration. It's surrounded by huge granite boulders that are stacked hundreds of feet high and are believed to have been formed by volcanic activity around 250 million years ago. Their shape and size make them extremely difficult to cross, especially by foot, and have meant that very few people have been able to explore what lies on the other side. The granite structures have also protected the land beyond, as they have prevented brush fires from spreading into Cape Melville and also helped to contain higher levels of moisture within it. This has led to the development of a lush ecosystem, and every time anyone goes to the effort to visit the region, they come back with incredible discoveries. In 2013, for example, a team of researchers became some of the only people to have ever set foot in the misty rainforest on the Melville mountain range, and they discovered previously unknown species of trees, geckos, skinks, and frogs. Quite what else remains to be found is not clear, 
but it's quite possible that one day a larger exploration team will be sent to understand the region once and for all. Number 10. Han Son Dung, Vietnam In 1991, a local Vietnamese man was trekking through the Phong Nha Ke Bang National Park in search of timber when he made an incredible discovery. In front of him was the opening of a cave, but the sounds that came from within, the wind whistling and the roar of a river, meant that he didn't enter and it would be another 18 years until an expedition went into the cave to learn more about it. Now known as Hang Song Dung, what they found was now recognized as the largest cave in the world, believed to have been formed by water eroding through natural limestone several million years ago. There's a huge river that runs through it, and they found several new species in the entrance alone. The main cavern is at least 3.1 miles long, 660 feet high and 490 feet wide, while the entire cave passage runs for at least 5.6 miles. Studies have found that the river is definitely connected to other cave systems, which means that Hong Song Dung, despite its size, is part of a much larger network. But quite how extensive this is isn't yet known. It's filled with some of the largest stalagmites and stalactites in the world, and in theory you could fly a Boeing 747 inside it without any risk of hitting the sides. But at the farthest end of what's been explored, there's a 200-foot tall wall of calcite that researchers have so far been unable to pass. What lies behind is a complete mystery, and could lead to a huge area to be explored, something that's probably just a matter of time until it happens, with such increased interest in the cave from both tourism and scientific perspectives. Number 9. Singi Deba Maraha National Park, Madagascar The island of Madagascar, which is off the eastern coast of the African continent, is one of the most unusual places you can visit in the world. Because it's been separated from larger land masses for so long, much of its wildlife has evolved independently to anywhere else, so it's become one of the most biodiverse places on Earth. The geography of the island is unique too, and can be so tricky to navigate that there are large regions that have yet to be explored. One of the most interesting areas is the Singi Deba Maraha National Park, which contains two very strange geological formations, the Great Singi and the Little Singi. They're also known as the Stone Forests and are vast structures that have been formed from limestone after millions of years and are now huge fields of stone pillars that are dangerously sharp at the tip. In fact, the word Singi translates to mean where one cannot walk barefoot and the 600 square miles of canyons, gorges and forests are almost completely inaccessible. The southernmost part of the park is open to tourists, but the rest remains off-limits for conservation purposes and because it's simply not safe to trek too far into the region. Every expedition that's allowed to venture further into the park finds new species that are perfectly adapted to living in the region, and it's believed that there are countless more creatures and plants still to be discovered there. We are constantly adding more people to the Top 5's production team to bring you all the best content. Be sure to subscribe with notifications on and hit the like button. Number 8. Kamchatka, Russia Russia's Kamchatka Peninsula is a 100,000 square mile stretch of land that makes up the farthest east part of the country. There are also just over 300,000 residents, despite being a similar size to California. And it was only in 1991 that outsiders were even allowed into the region because due to its remoteness, it was often used as a secret military testing site by the Soviet Union. It has one of the largest and most diverse ranges of salmon species in the world, and as a result, one of the biggest populations of brown bears on the planet. But what makes Kamchatka so unlike anywhere else is the volcanic activity. It has more than 300 active volcanoes, including one that's constantly been erupting since 1996. And some of them are so perfectly formed that they're often said to be the most beautiful volcanoes in the world. As you'd expect from a region with such prevalent volcanic activity, it's also subjected to a large number of earthquakes too, which is one of the main reasons why very few permanent structures have ever been built there. This means that without road network or easy ways of traveling around, the only way to get to the most remote regions of Kamchatka is by sled or foot. This has severely limited any attempts to explore the region, and when combined with government restrictions about who can go in there in the first place, Kamchatka remains largely unexplored. Number 7. Mount Mabu Rainforest, Mozambique The 5,600-foot-high Mount Mabu is in northern Mozambique and is unusual in that it's virtually completely covered in a rainforest. That's because there's been no deforestation or human activity in the area. This is all primarily old-growth rainforest too, and is one of the last places on Earth where things have remained the same for thousands of years. 
Locals, of course, have known about the dense vegetation and animals that live there for a long time, but they see it as a natural resource that must be protected and haven't historically paid much attention to charting and recording what's there. This all changed in 2005, however, when a team of scientists discovered the rainforest in the most unlikely of ways and set out to explore it. They had been looking at Google Earth in search of potential wildlife hotspots in Africa, and as soon as they saw the tree cover, they knew this was a prime candidate. Several teams have visited since, and each time they've discovered a large number of new species, including shrubs, a chameleon, a bat, snake, several butterflies, and countless more. Reaching the rainforest isn't easy, though, because the regions around it suffered extreme damage during the Mozambique Civil War. As government continues to repair roads and make the area more accessible, there are plans to designate Mount Mabu as a conservation area to prevent the risk of logging, and hopefully preserve it for future generations and allow researchers to more fully explore it and see what wonders it contains. Number 6. Lake Vostok, Antarctica the development of ground-scanning radars and satellite observations have allowed researchers to map Antarctica in ways that have never before been possible. One of the biggest discoveries these techniques have uncovered is the existence of hundreds of subglacial lakes. The largest of them is called Lake Vostok and is beneath Russia's Vostok Station on the East Antarctic Ice Sheet. The ice itself is 11,400 feet above sea level, and the lake is 13,000 feet beneath it which means that Lake Vostok is 1,600 feet below sea level, something that makes it one of the lowest-lying freshwater lakes in the world. It's 160 miles long, 30 miles wide, and covers an area of 4,800 square miles, and at points is as much as 2,600 feet deep. Despite knowing it's there, the actual act of getting to the lake to know what it's like is far more complicated. With such a thick layer of ice between it and the surface, only a few core samples have ever been retrieved. It's thought that the lake water may have been preserved down there for as long as 25 million years, which offers researchers an unprecedented glimpse into the past, but this further complicates their ability to explore it because of the risk of contaminating what's there. Evidence has so far been of microbial life, but this is just from one sample that was taken from one part of the lake. It's quite possible there's far more life down there, and potentially species that are larger than single-celled organisms. But until more effective ways are designed to more fully investigate it, it'll remain barely explored. Number 5. New Hebrides Trench, Pacific Ocean 70% of our planet's surface is covered in ocean, but because it's so difficult to journey to the depths, very little of the underwater world has actually been explored, and of particular interest are the deep-sea trenches which plunge down to extreme depths, usually on the boundaries between tectonic plates. The Mariana Trench is by far the most famous because it's where the deepest point in the oceans is located, and it's been the focus of research, but there are several other similar trenches that haven't been visited as often and remain a mystery. The New Hebrides Trench is one of these and is located between the South Pacific Islands of Vanuatu and New Caledonia in the Coral Sea. It's 750 miles long, 45 miles wide, and covers an area of 32,000 square miles with a maximum depth of just over 25,000 feet. It was first discovered by a German research vessel in 1910, but it was only in 2014 that the first images of what life in the trench is like were collected. From the data that's been gathered so far, researchers have found that the ecology of this trench is actually very different to others that have been studied, which suggests that each trench develops its own unique ecosystem. So far, deep-sea eels and prawns have been seen down there, but it's likely that there are far more unusual species hiding in the murky depths. Further studies are planned for the New Hebrides Trench, but for now, it remains one of the least explored places on Earth. Number 4. Gangkar Puensum, Bhutan Since humans have first set eyes on the highest peaks of mountain ranges, there has been a desire to climb them, whether for the challenge of scaling such a feat or for religious significance. But it was only in 1953 that the first team was confirmed to have scaled the tallest of them all, Mount Everest. Height isn't the only challenge when climbing a mountain, however and there are arguably plenty of others that are more difficult to attempt than Everest, the most famous of which is Gangkar Puensum in Bhutan. At 24,836 feet tall, it lies on the border with Tibet and is in the same mountain range as Everest, the Himalayas. With a name that translates to mean White Peak of Three Spiritual Brothers, it's considered to be the tallest unclimbed mountain. There are several reasons for this, and it's likely to retain this title for many years to come. Bhutan only opened its mountains to climbers in 1983, and since then there have only been four attempts to reach the peak of Gangkar Puensum, 
each of which failed and resulted in the teams turning back after encountering huge crevices and insurmountable cliff edges. In 1994, authorities in Bhutan have prohibited any climbing of mountains of over 20,000 feet in respect of local spiritual beliefs, and since 2003 have completely banned all forms of mountaineering. This means that even if someone felt prepared enough to tackle Gangkar Poensum, they wouldn't be allowed to, and the mountain will remain unexplored until there's a change of policy. Number 3. Northern Forest Complex, Myanmar The Northern Forest Complex of Myanmar stretches across more than 12,000 square miles in the north of the country on the border with India and China. With snow-covered mountains, lowland forests, and extensive wetlands, it's a stunning place that's home to tigers, bears, elephants, and countless species of birds, and is one of the largest remaining contiguous forests in Southeast Asia. At the center of it is the largest tiger sanctuary in the world, but large swaths of the region remain completely unexplored. The main reason for this is the political difficulties in the country over the past decades, with one of the longest-lasting civil wars in history. This has, of course, prevented any expeditions to the region, and while most of this has now been resolved, it remains a dangerous place for outsiders. The country's infrastructure doesn't help matters either. There are very few roads that lead to the northern forest complex, and hardly any that go through it. Scientists think there are plenty of new species of plants and animals to still discover there, many of which aren't found anywhere else in the world, but until the political situation becomes more favorable and the funds for expeditions can be raised, it will remain one of the least explored places on Earth. Number 2. Mount Roraima, Venezuela Located in the Pacaraima chain of tabletop mountains in South America, Mount Roraima is the tallest with an elevation of 9,220 feet. The area at the summit covers 12 square miles and is surrounded by 1,300-foot-tall cliffs. It is actually the location of the tri-point boundary between Venezuela, Guyana, and Brazil. It's believed by the local communities that the mountain was once where the tree grew that produced all the fruits and vegetables in the world, so for a long time it was left alone because of spiritual reasons, and in recent times it's become almost impossible to gain permission from the three countries to set foot on the summit. That's of course for anyone that thinks they'll be able to scale the perilous cliffs that surround it. There have only been a handful of successful attempts on what is often described as one of the most difficult mountaineering challenges on Earth. Those that have made it there, however, have recorded unique species of flora and fauna that haven't been seen elsewhere, and as likely there are far more to be discovered if a full exploration ever took place. One day this might be possible, but for now, the summit of Mount Roraima remains out of reach. Hate your playlist for more top 15 videos about beautiful nature. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best nature videos.